Hey, we're back at it. Uh, I've been kind of test fitting some things. We have our new uh, crank bushing, so I think we'll put that in. It sits in there. It fits pretty tightly, so I'm not putting any thread locker. I'm actually going to put a little oil on it because I think it might make it that much easier to install. I'll try and go from the back. Most of it sticks out the back. It might take more than this C clamp can do. I don't know. We pushed it in a little ways. All right, so that's really tight. You know, I didn't know how tight it was going to be, but I wasn't going to do it with the C clamp. That was not happening. So I've got this bolt set up. I'm just going to try and draw it in. And we might have to go until we run out of threads. And then we'll come back and re shim. Okay. So here's something interesting. This front seal, it's made of felt. It's just a little felt seal. And the new one looks like this. And we have to try and work that down into that hole somehow. First we have to get this old one out. Oh, I just don't know. Somehow we have to dig that out of there without scratching the crankshaft all up. We're just going to have to dig it out little bits at a time because it's very old. Let's see what we can do. Okay, that was a little challenging. I think I finally got the last little bit. I'm about to push it out here. Just got to be kind of creative. There we go. That was the last little bit of it. Getting this new seal work in was really challenging. It's it's a big seal. It's, it seems like it's too big to fit in there. I spent a lot of time on it, probably half an hour, just pulling on it and working at it. Uh, eventually we get it pulled in there. Okay, just a touch more. I think that is just about right. Yeah. Our wire has come up and out and we have our little sort of little noose right there. If we loosen this up, I think we can work it off there. There we go. Alright. There's our wire. That kind of pulled a little extra and I think we'll just trim off some of the extra there. Between the timing cover and the pan, I just used silicone. I'll talk a little more about that later. Once we get those started, there's a centering tool because you want this, this cam to be perfectly centered in this hole. You can buy these. I made this one. I just turned it on the lathe till it fits really tightly in this recess. So it fits around the step of the cam, it fits tightly in the recess, and what it does is it, it gets you perfectly, so the timing cover is per perfectly centered on the cam like it should be. We'll go ahead and throw in some more bolts here. Let's see. Okay, 
I know these face bolts need tightened up first. That's what holds everything in center. I tried putting in a felt gasket. It was too thick. There was just no way I was going to get everything put together. So, just on the bottom I use silicone and if it leaks, it leaks. It's probably going to leak anyway. Everything says that these Model T's just kind of notoriously leak a little oil. So, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's a learning experience. I don't want to go too tight on these. It does it does want to pull everything down, so I don't want to get too carried away on that. Okay. Pull our tool off. Should be good. Okay, when I took this apart, the only thing on here was the, the timer wheel. The way this timer sets on there, there's this rod that comes over from the controller. Normally this would go up to the steering column on the car. So then, as you're adjusting timing, it moves this timer back and forth. There is this little wheel. This sits on the end of the camshaft and as this rotates around it's making contact and you can see on the inside of this each stud you know is your four cylinders and it comes around and it makes contact and that completes the circuit which energizes that trembler coil so we've got a the lighting isn't great we've got a seal a felt seal that goes here they make a modern seal for this but i'm going to use the felt seal for now then we've got a dust shield that goes on it'll be held in place all right then our timer goes on our timer wheel rather sometimes it's a wheel i think sometimes it's a brush and they make all kinds of different configurations. They make a distributor that will set up on here that's aftermarket. Uh, so I don't even know how well this is going to work. We'll see. There's a pin and I've been told okay on my cam that pin right there on my camshaft this little hole doesn't go all the way through but if anybody who if you have your own Model T I guess sometimes they drill this hole all the way through so you can put the timer on 180 degrees out of time, and I was told to watch out for that. Mine, the hole doesn't go all the way through, so it doesn't really matter. It's got a little retainer. That just holds that pin from coming out. And then we have a nut that goes on there. and holds everything. I'll snug that down just a little. Okay, let's snug that down. Most things in my Ford book just say draw the bolt down tight or draw the nut down tight. It's not usually a torque spec. Okay, so let me wind that over so you can see what we're doing. Alright, so we can see there's a little spring tension. The cover will hold this guard, that heat shield in tight. I suppose Probably put a drop of oil on this. Maybe a little oil. That just spins all the time. Okay. There. This should set over the top of it. There's a little spring tension holding it. This guy goes over the center of that. We'll snug it up just enough to hold it. But it's not meant to be tight because this timer still has to be able to move. That has to stay loose because on a Model T you're constantly changing your ignition timing based on whether you're starting it or 
if it's under heavy load. I don't know all the details yet, but it's got to be adjustable. So basically that's how that goes. I did want to point out, we showed you those old plugs. When I was at my parts place the other day, which by the way, uh, it's called Bird Haven, and it's in uh, Colfax, Iowa. And I met two of the nicest people you could ever hope to meet. Their prices are really reasonable. Anyways, picked I picked up, up these plugs. They work with the Model T. Obviously, they're not, you know, they're not a restoration reproduction. It's a modern style, but it's still got the screw tip, which is important. I didn't want to use a modern style plug wire. So, we picked those up. Okay, these are the updated style of a gasket for the intake and exhaust. They're just little copper rings and they kind of just snap in and hold in there. I've cleaned up my intake and exhaust, just wire brushed them a little bit. It can be tricky to get this to all set in there. Like a guy would want it to. I know we can do it. Let's see. In there. Okay. But it requires some patience. Okay, let's go ahead. So I'll show you what the problem is, why I cannot seem to get this on. I've heard these can be warped, and I thought maybe it meant warped on this plane, but it doesn't. It means warped on this plane. So let's just go, we'll just go across our gaskets. When we're tight on these two outer ones, it puts us way off on these inners. Like, I'll put it on the outside of the gasket here like that. That'll make it a little more apparent. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but there is too much gap here and here. This is warped this way. So, I would have to either get a new manifold. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this lip off on half of each of these gaskets and I can orientate them so that we can try and make it work. This is the exhaust. It's not as important as the intake. An intake leak is going to cause us a problem. A little exhaust leak probably isn't the worst. So we'll let's grind a little off these and then we'll try that. All right, I hated to do it, but what I've done here is I've ground this lip off a little more than half. Because when I set that up there, it takes, because it's warped, those center two ports just set up too high. So by grinding off the top of that, it lets that slide up a little bit to where it needs to slide. So if I orient these in the bottom there. I think that's going to get me what I need. So this will go in. Well, and it does. I'll probably have an exhaust leak. These exhaust manifolds are still available. They're about 90 bucks, which is not outrageous. Okay, let's take a look. So as we look down in there, you can see how it sandwiches them in. Okay, so I was cleaning up this fan clutch. Uh, well, I call it a fan clutch. It's a, it is a fan governor, and it is meant to. I guess it's meant to maintain a constant speed 
under different loads when you're running something off the PTO. Uh, Themen G6 is what this says. All right. Uh, and I noticed, oh, there's some other pieces that have uh, some markings. I don't know. That says G4 on it. I don't know if it's a Themen G6 or just a Themen... Uh, theme and governor and the different parts have those numbers stamped into them anyway i've got it all disassembled and i was cleaning everything up the bearing assembly it's got a little bit of roughness i don't know if it's a bearing or if it's a bushing i assumed it was just a bushing it's got this screw that's an oil hole and i didn't know how to how do you get it apart i assume there's some kind of a ball and weight assembly in there this little rod stuck out the back so i'm sure as it revs up it pushes this rod out so as i cleaned it up i noticed i wire brushed it i thought these were rivets they are not rivets those are uh, actually little cap screws so we're going to pull it apart and we will see what is inside i'm going to clean this fan all up but i thought we'd do kind of a first look okay so there's our top plate you can see this was actually it is painted in there very old paint okay yeah all right okay if you can see that that's exactly what that is, is a little set of weights. The faster this spins, the farther it throws these weights out, which is going to, if we can see what's in there. Okay. I wonder if I can hold this in a way that we can see it. Oh, okay, I see. All right, so we've got this. It rides like this as these weights are in. As these weights go out, see if we can hold it there, it pushes out on that pin. And on the end of that pin, on the outside, rides this. So, anyway, you get the idea. Revs up, pushes out on the pin, which... As that pin goes out, it actuates this rod, which is linked to the throttle butterfly on the carburetor. When I get this all put back together, it's going to make a lot more sense. But this allows us to get down in there. That That is a bearing. There is a ball bearing in there, and it's rough, so we're going to really clean that up good. Uh, looks like there's two screws in here, and when we pull them out... we'll be able to get this bearing out. Once I get everything thoroughly cleaned up, then we'll look at it before we put it back together. Okay. I thought maybe this was all one piece. Now I think that nut unscrews. I'm going to go see if I can take that off. Okay, so that does in fact screw off. I had to Put that in the aluminum jaws on the vise. So this probably also helps kind of set the preload on that bearing a little bit. Okay, so now I bet if we give this a few taps, that will come out. Yep. Okay. All right, how about that? Wow, that's actually really nice because it's got a double bearing in there. And it's rough, but just because dirt. When we get this, I'm, I probably won't have to replace these bearings. I bet if I wash them really good and we will re-oil them. This front bearing is almost stuck. But that's going to clean up. So now we've got... I've done some cleanup and we have a, a small problem. The problem is... The looseness I was feeling 
is that the bore that the bearing sets in is loose. I've got a little movement here. That movement is actually the bearing moving in the housing. That's bad. And I've even noticed this back one, as I spin this bearing, I sometimes see the race spin a little bit. So this back one's pretty tight. I can put just a little bit of, I've got a Loctite that's a bearing lock. That'll work good. But on this inside one, it's so loose that uh, that's not going to be enough. It actually, I've put it through the other way, and you can actually, it'll wobble back and forth. That what had happened was this inside bearing was stuck. When I took this out, it was locked up tight, and the race had been spinning in the housing, kind of hogging it out. It didn't hurt it too bad. What I'm going to do to fix it, I'm just going to use a little bit of epoxy, and we are going to put a real small amount of it uh, just in the bore. We'll push this in. We'll put some bearing lock on this outer. We'll let it set up. It'll work real good. If I was worried about the bearing wasn't in good shape, I would worry about it tearing up that epoxy later, but this bearing is so nice, I'm, I know it's going to work good. It really does take a very, very light coating because it's going to have a tendency to to push it all down to the bottom and we don't want it getting all wadded up around our race. This outer bearing will just put a very small amount of retaining compound on there. Again, it doesn't take much and if we ever want to remove this we would have to apply a little heat before we press it out. When I dropped it in, it just kind of gently slid right down in there. We'll just push it home, and then we will leave it be, let it set up. We've got everything cleaned up. Let's see if we can get it put together. Uh, I've got this in that last one, you know, we put some epoxy around there. It There's no play in that bearing race now. Everything spins good. So I went ahead, I cut a gasket uh, that will fit on here. The machining process is not real exact, so it really only fits one way. So okay we've got this fan blade uh, this is our little presser foot that was in there I'm just gonna put a maybe a drop of oil on it there is a a hole in here that we can oil periodically I did take this uh, shaft was a little bit loose on here so I just touched it up with some solder just to make it nice and Secure. I don't. Maybe it was supposed to be a little loose on there. I don't know. It is what it is. So we'll set that guy like that. Then we've got that fan blade has a an indention there that fits into this other indent. That'll go over. Then our gasket. Hopefully everything lines up. Okay, then that. Oh, I almost forgot. Inside of here, there are two screws, and they help retain that bearing so that bearing can't come out. So let's throw those in there. Okay, so that's our bearing retainer. Alright, we'll put a little form of gasket on here, which is just messy. Okay, so we got that snug down. 
is going to screw into our bracket here. I had to custom make this thin little wrench so it'll fit under there. It's a 7 8 inch. That will hold that. Slide that down. Okay. That doesn't have to be really tight because it's got a, a pinch bolt there to hold it. So here's our plunger. Goes in. I could actually, when I push that, I felt it spread the weights. So then this goes so that this little flat rests on that plunger. So we'll put that in first. This comes up and is where our, well, it goes this way, where our spring comes across for the actuator. I'm putting this back to what together the way it came apart, and that's not to say there shouldn't be a washer in here somewhere. There just wasn't one in there when I took it apart. So that gives that just a little bit of spring pressure. This linkage, I believe, is what comes from my throttle control. This bolt goes through to clamp it on the shaft. Comes through to this side, which there's a corresponding notch. This nut slips in so that can't loosen up over time so we have to hold the nut steady while we tighten down the bolt as this sits on there we've got our spring which sets right, right on there there we go. All right, so as we throttle it up, as this spins faster, it's going to push out on this lever. Let's put it on the car and see what it looks like. Let's see, we got our shouldered bolt here that goes in. Okay, and we don't want to go tight, so we can do some adjustment. This little bolt right here serves as our point of adjustment to get it roughly where it needs to be. This is our, this is our oil hole. I will put a few drops of oil in there, but for now we'll just throw that on. So the main problem I'm seeing is I got kind of excited about my water pump and I just really think it's going to be in the way. There might be a way to make it work. Probably we'll just take it back off. It was a nice thought. But so now as this spins, the faster this spins, the more it's going to throw those weights out, the more it's going to push out on this. We've got our throttle which we're going to have to make a little bell crank to transmit that from uh, this throttle arm up to this throttle but as we as we increase throttle it's going to pull on the carb linkage if we adjust the spring right I guess it should maintain a constant speed we'll find out I can hear those weights as they slap around in there. It'll just be interesting to see how this all works. On this other side, uh, we have this linkage. I put a new spring on it. The old spring was in bad shape. We cleaned these threads up. Obviously, this is adjustable. That gives us just a little bit of play. I don't know until uh, we get the carburetor put on. It's kind of hard to envision exactly what's going on there but I do know that that goes in there and then we will but I'll throw a cotter pin in here for now 
just to uh, keep it from falling out. That's kind of a temporary thing, but we'll get this put together and adjusted later. But I think all the all the working parts are there. We've got our functioning linkage. Once I make a the little bell crank for this other side here, we'll get it completed. But so far, I think we're close on that. So listen, this one got a little bit long and boring. I get a little carried away sometime with the details, but the next one we're going to make some major progress and thanks for watching.